Hey, it's Greg from The Code Creative. You know, it's not always smooth sailing when working with event listeners. In a larger application, for example, one where there might be many files and many different people working on the code, you might need some help when you run into a problem and you need to do some debugging. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you four tools that we can use for debugging event listeners. And the tools that we're looking at here are console utilities, which are available when working with Google Chrome's dev tools. These tools, as you'll see in a moment, can help us to make sure that the intended event type and event handler have actually been added correctly to an element, and also to make sure that an event was dispatched or fired in the first place. So let's start off with tool number one, and this one is called Get Event Listeners. What this one's going to allow us to do is inspect an element on the page and see its event listener or event listeners that have been registered on it. So as always, to keep things simple, I just have a button in my index.html file, and I'm writing my JavaScript in a pair of script tags here in the index.html file as well. You can see I'm selecting the button, and then I'm adding an event listener to that button with a click event type, and I have this callback function event handler here that's not doing anything, but that's okay for this example. The first thing you want to know in order to use get event listeners is that you want to inspect the element that you're concerned with. So in this case, it's the button, and I can right-click or control-click on it, and then I can choose Inspect. And now if I go to the Console tab in my DevTools, if I do $0 and hit Enter, you can see it gives me that button element. So $0 is representing the most recently selected DOM node. And now that we have that, we can use Get Event Listeners, and we can pass in that $0, and this will show us the event listeners that are registered on this element. In this case, we have a click. But for example, let's say that I come into my code again, and I register another event listener. Let's do a mouse enter. And then I run the same code. Well, now you can see we've got both the click and the mouse enter. And if I expand them, we can see all the various properties on those event listeners. And by the way, we go deep into these event types and event listeners in my course on DOM events in JavaScript, and I'll drop a link in the comments and description section down below if you want to check that out. Moving on to tool number two now, we're going to look at the event listeners tab in the elements panel. So again, we can start out by inspecting the element that we're interested in. So we'll inspect this button element. And you can see now we're in the elements panel, but on the right here, we have the event listeners tab. And so let me click on that. And what you can see are the events listed out, which have been registered on this element. And this is very much similar to what we just saw with Get Event Listeners. However, this Event Listeners tab gives us more to play with. So let's say, for example, on that mouse enter event, we actually ran some code. Let's uh, style the button to become red on mouse enter. Right, so now when my cursor entered the button, the text became red. So we know that code's running. But let's say I really just want to focus on the click event. So as you can see, we have this Remove button for each event. And if I click the Remove button on the Mouse Enter event, for example, and now when I do a Mouse Enter over the button, you can see that its event handler callback function isn't running anymore. One other thing that you can see here is that we have the ability to filter events. So here where it says All, if I click on it, we have the option to filter by All, Passive, or Blocking. So none of our event listeners are passive now, so if we click on it, they're just going to disappear. Blocking are going to be all those events that aren't passive. So again, they'll both appear. And all, of course, is going to be the same. Let's take a moment and see what this Ancestors checkbox does. As you can see in our HTML file, right now we just have the button element. And this button element doesn't have any Ancestor elements that have event listeners on them. But we can experiment with it. Let's uh, wrap that button element in a div with the class of container. In our script tag, let's go ahead and let's select that container element. And let's add an event listener to it. We'll just do a mouse over event. It doesn't really matter for this example. And we'll just leave the event handler function empty for now. Now I'll go ahead and save. Now if I go back and I inspect the element once again. Now if I go to the event listeners tab here on the right, you can see that not only do we see the event types registered on the button element, which are the click and the mouse enter, but we also see those events which are registered on any ancestor elements of the button. And that's why we're seeing mouse over here, which is registered on that container element. 
But if you just want to focus on those events associated with the mouse button itself, just unclick Ancestors. Now, one other thing I want to just show you with this Event Listeners tab is what's called Framework Listeners, this checkbox here. And this is going to be relevant when you are working with some kind of framework. In this example, you can actually see here on line 10 that I brought in jQuery. And I know a lot of people aren't using jQuery so much anymore, but this could apply to various frameworks. So what I'm going to do, instead of selecting the button in the way that we're doing here, we'll select it in the jQuery kind of way, which is like so. And I'm going to save, and what I want you to pay attention to is the link here, which takes us to the code. And check out now, we see jQuery. So if I was to click on this, you can see that it's taking us to the jQuery code, which is the framework wrapper code, rather than to our own code, which should be this callback function. So the way to remedy that is simply to click on this framework listeners checkbox. And now you can see, when we do click on this, that takes us directly to our very own code. Let's keep it moving now, and we'll talk about tool number three, which is called Monitor Events. And this is how it works. First again, let's go ahead and let's inspect our button element. And then we want to come down to the console panel, and we're going to say Monitor Events. And this is going to take two arguments. The first one is going to be the element that we want to listen for events on. And since we just inspected the button element, as we know, we can use $0. And then the second argument is the type of event that we want to listen for. So let's say that we want to listen for click events on the button. Okay, now we can hit enter. And now we're going to be monitoring for a click event on that button. So let's go ahead and try it. I'll click. And here we can see we get the click event. So monitor events can be good for actually verifying that an event is getting fired on the element that we're interested in. And we can also expand it to check out its event object and find out all the details about that event that just occurred. Now let's clear the console, and let's say that we actually wanted to listen to more than just one event on that button. So in my code, I'll also enter in a mouse enter event on my button. And what I can do once again is use monitor events. First argument is the element we're interested in. And now since we want to listen to multiple event types, we can pass in an array as the second argument and the various event types that we want to listen for. So we're going to listen for a click, and we're also going to listen for a mouse enter. So let's see if this works. First, we'll hover over it to get our mouse enter, and we see mouse enter in the console, and then if I click, we see click is also being monitored. So I know that I've had a situation before where I had a button that wasn't firing even though I was clicking on it, and it turned out it was due to another element which was transparent, but it was overlapping it with a z-index. In that situation, I think this Monitor Events tool could be useful. Now, once we've actually debugged our problem, what we can do is we can say unmonitor events like that, and we're going to pass in the very same arguments, and this is going to stop the monitoring of those events. Now, tool number four is a really cool one. It's called Event Listener Breakpoints. Let's check out how it works. So this one is going to be available in the Sources panel. And you can see it right here on the right, Event Listener Breakpoints. So let's expand that. And here you can see we get all the various event categories. Now we can either choose to listen to an entire category, such as the mouse event category. So I could just click on mouse like that. Or I can get more granular, and I can expand the mouse category. And I can listen for just a specific type of mouse event, like a click or a double click, for example. So for this example, I just went back to the simple button with the click event type on it. So let's check off click. And now notice what happens when we actually fire that event. So let's click on the button. And here we see paused and debugger. And what we can see is that we've actually jumped right into our event handler code on that button. And as usual, when we're working with breakpoints in the debugger, just in general, we can step in and out of our code using these various arrows here. So with these event listener breakpoints, we're not first inspecting a particular element as we were doing with the other tools but rather we're just listening globally to any time any one of the selected event types come in. As I mentioned earlier, I really think these debugging tools become more valuable when you're working on larger code bases, in which there might be multiple files and possibly several, several different authors. Because sometimes with those larger projects, it can be a lot more difficult to figure out where things are coming from and which code is being run in response to a particular event. By the way, if you want to explore DOM events further, I have a course for you on DOM events in JavaScript. 
And this course is packed with everything that you need to know about the inner workings of DOM events, how to listen to events, and how to handle them with JavaScript. And we definitely go into a lot of detail on everything from mouse events to keyboard events to focus and blur events, and much, much more. You'll find the link below in the description in the comment sections. I'd love for you to check it out. See you next time.